Okay guys, so in the previous video, we saw that how do we hash our passwords. So in this video, let's see that how do we generate an access token. So currently, if we go to our auth route here, and whenever we are registering our new user, we are simply sending back that user here. That is inside the response. But we want to send a pair of access token and refresh token. So let's see that how do we generate an access token in this video. So for that, I am going to use this library that is JSON Web Token and it's an NPM package. So firstly, let me install this NPM package. So let's go here. Let's stop our application and let me do NPM install dash dash save JSON Web Token. And now while it's, while it's installing, what we want to do, we want to create a new file here that is inside the helpers folder. That is to generate the access token, the refresh tokens and all the verification of the access token and the refresh tokens would also be done inside this file only. Though we can generate an access token and refresh token here in this route here, but that is not recommended. You should keep all your logic for handling the refresh tokens or the access tokens or verifying the refresh tokens or the access tokens inside a separate file so that it will make your life a hell lot easier because you can manage all the JWT authentication logic inside a single file. So now let's go to this helpers folder here and now let me right click and let's create a new file and I'll call this file JWT helper JWT helper dot JS and now inside this file we'll be exporting some functions. So firstly what I want to do I want to require JWT that uh, that is from the package that we installed. So const JWT equal to require a JSON web token that is the packet which we installed and now we also want to require our HTTP error package because we are also handling the errors here so const create error equal to require HTTP errors and now what we want to do we want to export a couple of functions from this file so let me export those function so module dot exports equal to and the first function which we want to export is the sign access token function. So let me export that function. So sign access token. And this function would take in one argument and that is the user ID of the user. So let me pass in the user ID here like this. So this is one of the functions which we are going to export from this file. And now what we want to do since this package here, that is this JSON web token package works on callbacks and there are no promises support here. So what we can do, we can use our own promises here inside this function here. So what we can do, we can simply return here a new promise. So return new promise and this takes in resolve and reject as the arguments. And then inside here, we can use this JSON web token library to sign our access token. So let's use it. So JWT dot sign. And here it takes in three arguments if you are using the synchronous version and the four arguments if you are providing in the fourth argument as the callback. So the first argument is the payload. The second is the secret or private key. And the third is the options parameter. So let me create those parameters here first. So const payload equal to name and this is only for demonstration purposes. We are going to change this payload. So yours truly is the payload and const secret equal to some super secret. And we'll be generating a super secret in the next video and we'll be storing that in the environment file. And then from the environment file, we are going to use that secret. And now the third parameter is the options parameter. And for now, let the options be an empty object. So now let's provide in the three options here. So the first is the payload. The second is the secret. The third is the options here like this. And now let's provide in the fourth argument. That is the callback since we are using asynchronous version and the callback contains first argument as the error and second argument is the token itself like this. And now firstly, we'll check if there is some error then we can simply reject this promise that we have created above and we can simply pass in the error here like this. And if there is no error, then we can simply resolve this promise and we can pass in the token here, which we get back inside the callback here. 
And now what we want to do, we want to use the sign access token function inside our auth route where we are registering our user. Because we do not want to send back a saved user, we want to send back the token here. So now to access this function, that is sign access token inside our auth route, what we want to do, we can require it. So const and here we can use destructuring. So const sign access token equal to require and we need to go to the helpers folder and then we are requiring it from the JWT helper file. Let's save it. Let's also save the helper file here. And now we can use this function here after we are saving the user. So what we can do const access token equal to await since this function that is this sign access token function returns as a promise here. So we can use await here. Otherwise, if we were using the pure library, then we won't be able to use the await keyword. So await sign access token and then we need to pass in the user ID and we can get the user ID from saved user dot ID like this. And now what we can do, we can simply send back this access token to the client instead of sending back the user, we can send back the access token. So now let me save this and everything seems to work fine. So let's go to our risk client and let's click here register route and we get this here that is this user is already registered. So let me change the user here with an E here and now let me make a request here and we see that we are getting this token back and this is an access token. So let me copy this token from here and let's go to this thing here that is jwt.io website and here let me paste this token here inside the debugger so that we can see that what all is inside the payload. So let me paste it here and we see that the algorithm is HMAC SHA-256 type is JWT and the payload contains the name yours truly since we provided this in the payload here as we can see here that this is the hard coded payload so the name is there and then this is automatically attached to the payload that is the issuing time of the JWT and this is this time shows us today that is June 18, 2020, 1749 and this is the time when this JWT was issued. So we can see that we are able to generate our tokens. But now let's generate the proper access token which we are going to use in our authentication API. So for that what we want to do, we need to provide in the payload ourselves and we want to provide in some options here. We want to and the first option we want to provide here is the expiration time of this JWT. So because of this library, we can provide in the options that is a registered claim that is the expiration claim very easily inside the options here. If you if you are not providing that expiration time in the options, you can provide this op expiration time here that is using exp because it is a registered claim. And then we need to do something like this that is new date. And then you need to manipulate the date. But what we can do? Since we are using this library that is JSON web token. So here we can provide in one first option that is expires in like this. And here you simply need to provide in the time in seconds or minutes or year or hours. And let's see that how do we provide it. So if we go to the JSON web token website and if we scroll down and here uh, we can see that uh, to provide the expiration time, we can simply use this thing here that math.floor like this, but there is a super easy way. So we can use this thing here. That is, we are using the options here because they are using three arguments. First is the payload. The second is the secret. And uh, third is the options here. And here we can simply pass in. If we want to expire our token in one hour, then we can simply provide in one H. And then if we want to expire our token in five seconds, then we can provide in five ways. And this all comes from this thing here. So let me see where that is. I suppose that this thing is it that this library that is MS library. Okay, so this thing is it comes from this library that is already included in this JSON web token package that is for two days, you can provide in two days like this or for a single day. You can provide in one day and for two days, you can also provide in 2D here. 
and then for 10 hours you can provide in 10 H and then for minute you can provide in 1 M or for 5 seconds you can provide in 5 S. So this is that way that we are going to use our expire send property. So let's go back. So we want to expire this token in a single hour. So let me provide in 1 H like this because this thing expires in would automatically be converted to exp by this library that is json web token library and the second payload field which we want is the issuer so we can write issuer like this so iss is the issuer and here you can provide in your website so for now let me provide in pickyourpage.com and it's my website and again you can provide iss in the payload and you can provide in your value here or what you can do we can use the issuer inside the options here so what we can do we can use issuer inside the options here and here we can also provide in our website here that is who is the issuer of this token so either we can do iss or we can do issuer here that is inside the options but we cannot do both if we do both then we'll, we are going to get an error here so let me save this and I'll show you that what error do we get. So if we go here and let me register another user and we say that we are getting this option here. The payload already has an ISS property. So this is the error which we are getting. So that is why you should either provide ISS in payload or you should provide issuer in options here. And I'm going to use this thing here. That is I'm going to use the options here. And let me delete this name thing from here because we do not want the name here. And now we need one more field in the payload and that is who is the audience of this token. And basically if you read about the documents and that is the registered claim that is audience and audience represents that who this token is intended for. And in our case, this token is intended for this user ID. So we can inside the payload provide the AUD claim that is for the audience. And here we can simply provide in the user ID. But again, since we are using this library, we can use the audience keyword here like this and we can simply pass in the user ID here like this. So now let me remove this audience thing from here and let me save this application. And now this is all what we want inside our token. That is we want to we want to have our token expire in one hour. Then the issuer of this token is our site or whatever site you want or whatever name you want. And then the audience of this token is who this token is intended for. And now when we generate this token, we are getting back this token with these fields here. That is the expires in issuer and audience. So now let me save this and let's go to our auth route. And now instead of sending back the access token, let's send back an object of access token so that we can get a JSON response back and not only the access token. So now let me again make a request here and this time I'm providing four E's. So we see that we get back an access token and this is the access token as you all can see. So let me copy it and let's go back here and inside this JWT.io let me paste it here and we see that the payload contains all the four fields that we provided. This IIT field is automatically generated that is issued at then the expire time and we see that the expire time is 18 hours and 58 minutes and that the issuing time is 17 hours and 58 minutes. So the token is about to expire in a single hour. And we, and we also see that we have the audience claim that is AUD claim and it is the user ID. And then we see that the issuer is pickyourpage.com because that is the issuer which we provided. So guys, this is how you generate JWTs inside your application. and you should typically generate your JWT for a single hour or so as you have generated here or you can make this expire time a much lesser. You can make this token expire in 5 minutes or 10 minutes and then we can use the refresh token to generate another pair of access token and refresh token. But for now let's keep it 1 hour only. So guys that's all about this video. So in the next video let's see that how do we generate the super secret key using the built in Node.js crypto module.